Hey guys, Curious Hobbies here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be showing you guys some really interesting things I found about the Dolphin emulator. A while ago, I made a video on how to install Homebrew and use a program for Homebrew called CleanRip that can rip the contents of Wii and GameCube discs to ISO files. In that video, I also showed how you can run these files in an emulator called Dolphin. This is really interesting and has been used by a channel called Malio to create some really interesting playthroughs of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, for instance, by sequencing the player input frame by frame. However, if you've tried to do this with a Wii game, you may have discovered that the resulting disk data is split into multiple files, the number of files depending on the chunk size you set. The reason for this is the SD card format the Wii supports is not capable of holding any files of larger size than 4GB, and most if not all Wii games are just over this whereas GameCube mini-discs are like 1.5. Even games whose data files don't fill up the whole thing, like Super Paper Mario, for instance, which is actually 500-something megabytes, the biggest part of it can't work right, because perhaps the game's files are scattered more evenly. As a result, Dolphin practically can't run them. So these files obviously need to be joined somehow. The question here is how exactly is this to be done? There was one program I saw which is meant to merge Wii files. However, I couldn't find that video again, and it wasn't really available anymore. So in that case, what option really is there? How exactly do you join these? Well, because these files are split at intervals that you can set by setting your chunk size, there's literally nothing attached to the split ends because it wouldn't make sense which actually means the end of the first one is split right at the point where it hits 4 gigabytes. The last character or byte of data in which being the end, and the first character of the second part is literally the next byte in the whole disk. So we need to join these files, literally, end of first to beginning of second, end of second to beginning of third, if there's a third file, and so on. The first way I try to do this is to open the chunk files in Apple's text edit, and try to select all of the second part copy it, and paste it at the end of the first one. However, there is kind of a problem with this. Again, these files are several gigs, so you might imagine even just displaying, let alone selecting, highlighting, copying, pasting, and saving the text would require over a disk load of RAM. That makes the process really slow, so it's almost if not absolutely undoable, so I'd given up on that one. However, there is actually a term for what I want to do. What this process is known as is concatenation. So if you search for how to specifically join Wii files, the results you get might not be as relevant as if you search for something like concatenate files followed by your OS, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux, or even just something more general like join split files. Here's an article I found on how to join files like this using the command line on macOS. It's not about Wii ISOs, although it is about ISO files in general, and it explains in detail exactly what you need to do, which is important because of how syntax sensitive the command line is. So if you're using a Mac, here is how to concatenate these chunk files. Open the terminal app that came with macOS by going to Applications, Utilities. Once open, a command line interface appears in a window. At this point, I definitely recommend you follow closely. Type the letters C-A-T as shown for part of the word concatenate. Then, go to your SD card that has your game chunks. Drag the first one into the window. Then drag the second, then the third one if that's there, etc. What that does is it automatically inserts the path to it from the root of the card as a string. Type in a greater than symbol by holding the shift key and press period. Press space. Locate the folder you want to save the resulting ISO file to, and drag it to the command line. Insert a slash at the end of the path, followed by a name. In this case, 
I'm using SPM for Super Paper Mario dot ISO. After that, all that remains is press return. Wherever you chose to save it to, you should see it being added now. Now, you can open it in Dolphin, and hey, it actually works. Cool trick, no? Also, regardless of whether it's a Wii or GameCube ISO, emulation requires more power than natively running the game. And also, the kind of lag and chop you might get is not desirable at all. Not only can the game's visual stutter, but the audio can sound slow and choppy as well. Now, do not get me wrong, I think it's really interesting, but it also sounds horrible. So here's a couple of tips. If you go to the config panel, the general tab is open by default. In basic settings, dual core and idle skipping are both things you might want on if you only care about gameplay. Under the audio tab, there is an option for audio backend. I found leaving this at core audio is preferable, but your options might be different, and it might depend on your OS as well. The DSP engine setting is fine with the default HLE fast option. The graphic settings can also be changed if you want to mess with them. I use the most performant options, and I haven't found any effects out of them. But most of all, in the config tab under advanced is one setting that's the most useful. It's called CPU Clock Override. Please note, this only shows here if you're using Dolphin version 5+, so let's enable it and drag down that slider. This forces the game to be louder in performance, because what it does is it overrides the game's rendering and calculation by forcing it to display the frame before it would be done by deal on the native machine. However, by its same nature, it can cause graphical and behavioral glitches, which I've actually noticed, and it can and will break games. So use it at your own risk, and do not report bugs that occur with it enabled. Mostly I've had the setting on, especially with Star Fox Adventures lately, which was known for being graphically ahead of its time, and I agree that it's really darn impressive, especially for being developed in 2002. The fire, grass, and water, how the reflections and refractions are distorted, especially the fur they did on the characters. And it's also quite a memory to me. I remember discovering the Wii could run GameCube discs, so I spent my allowance on a GameCube controller and two games, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and this game. And I did play it a bit, but then I misplaced it in a slit and didn't find it again until like two years later. Then I got through the game. Anyways, as a result of that, unsurprisingly, it's also the slowest game I've tried in Dolphin without the CPU clock. It runs at like half of its normal speed, so I guess I just won't report anything I find. Honestly, I really would like to see this game remade because God knows what they'll come up with. Also, if you select a folder that you want Dolphin to search for these games, it actually shows them in a list. More so, if you right click one, it actually shows options for it. You can set options that you think make each game run best, and even more so, there's a tab here called File System. In it, you can actually see the folders and files that are on the virtual disk image. If you think about it, I guess it kind of makes sense though, as it can run the games, so how would it not be capable of this? I guess the smart people who made it wouldn't understand. So here, the coolest thing I found is the starfox.thp file. As with some of the other files, I looked up what these files are, and I found that THP files can actually be opened using a media player called VLC. So I actually tried this, and it actually works. This is the intro demo for the game that shows up on a modeled screen. Paper Mario TTYD, I did find an SAMP file. Based on some research, this file contains ADPCM audio, which I think I read can also be in a VOX file. I did find an online VOX to wave converter, and did get a result from trying it out. Although the result is totally not accurate, which is pretty audible. First of all, the file is very very loud. Second, 
It sounds like being in some kind of sci-fi spaceship airplane jet thing. It cuts out frequently as well. Hope you got at least some interest out of that, but let's move on to the next Paper Mario game in the series, aka Super Paper Mario, since I just found out how to join Wii games. In this one, there's a sound folder that has a whole bunch of these BRSTM files. I looked that up, and it looks like these can also be opened in VLC. However, there still are two problems with this, as you might have expected. I mean, we're talking about ISO files. First of all, the names of a lot of these are a bit misleading. This music is the final boss, Count Black. Part of the name of this file is MR underscore Ziggin. Did they actually plan on naming Count Black that? Because if so, it does actually sound kind of wizard-ish. Mr. Ziggin does not care about any world. They are all meaningless. Anyways, another problem is for some strange reason, the audio plays at twice the speed, and the pitch is an octave higher than it should be. It sounds like, well, if you're familiar with the game, you might know it has a speed flower item, which makes you get twice as many points, and distorts all the game audio just like this. There is a way of slowing the playback down, but that does not change the pitch, and at first, there didn't seem to be a way of lowering it in VLC. Fortunately, there is a way of changing how it interprets the playback speed setting, and changes the pitch as you change the speed. And fortunately, 0.5 makes it the right pitch and the right speed, because it's 0.5, so you can listen to it normally, although you can't change the speed and pitch separately. Go to your menu bar and click VLC. Now choose Preferences, then click Show All. Scroll down and untick Enable Time Stretching Audio. Now when you slow down the playback speed, it actually compensates properly. And now, you can actually make it sound like a slow flower as well. Unfortunately, even though VLC can actually convert files to many audio and video formats, it doesn't take your speed setting into account, and therefore, it stays as it is, distorted. I also found some WAD files here, and I found that these could be opened in Dolphin, and that these are actually system files. So I don't know why they're in the game. There are these native channels that come with the Wii, like the Mi, Photo, and Shop channels, and the system menu. Since they're on the disc, they have no tie with any specific Wii machine or account, and there initially isn't any channels on the menu. Although, you can actually install channels to this Wii menu through the Dolphin window. The way you can do so is to right-click them. You can also right-click on an ISO file, and there's an option called Change Disc. What that does is it virtually puts the game into the disc channel, just like inserting the disc on a physical Wii. Needless to say, I think you might want to be careful with some of these things. Anyways, that's about it for this. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, feel free to like it, share, and sub to my channel for more content. If you want to get notifications on new uploads, click on the bell icon after subscribing to my channel. I try to post new videos on Saturdays or Sundays. Also, to go to my channel, click on my icon or channel name just below the video. For any questions or requests you have, please let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.